You're watching KETK News at 6. Local, experienced, trusted. Welcome back, everybody. So joining me live right now in our studio is East Texas Congressman Louis Gomer, right back from Philadelphia, where he traveled last week mm -hmm. while the ballots are being counted. That's right, it's for Joe Biden. So, Mr. Gomer, let me ask you right now. You just got back from Philadelphia, but I have a personal question. UPS and FedEx right now knows where every package is in the country and where it's going to be going, what time it gets there. How come we don't know where every ballot is? Well, because the election laws have been done in such a way, especially in places like California, where they have relaxed control. Uh, they have relaxed uh, the ability to uh, uh, get votes in. You know, they, you've had some places where uh, even a judge ruled, uh, yeah, the law requires you compare the, the signatures, but if they don't match, there's no, the law doesn't say to throw one out. Of course you're supposed to throw them out when they don't match. But uh, I hear a lot of people too, Neil, say, look, you know, Biden won by five million votes. Trump needs to give it up. You know where we, he uh, won by five million votes? California. That's what, That was a five million uh, vote edge. And we know that there are lots of illegal people, aliens that voted there. There are votes that used to be illegal, but harvesting was legal, legalized. There's all kinds of fraud there. So let's just put California aside. Uh, from what I understand, the model that was used used for how many votes were going to need to be harvested for the election was Trump might, if he's lucky, get the same number of votes that Obama did. When he blew by that, it caused all kinds of problems. He was on his way to win in Texas, winning other places and securing the election when they realized there had to be uh, new efforts. Now, I was up election night and told the the voting is the counting has been suspended. And now if you go online, the high tech uh, fascists are now saying that never happened, that's a myth, you know, it's false information. I mean, that's so Orwellian to tell you something and then say, we never told you that. So this is serious stuff and there is so much intrigue in these battleground swing states that uh, we have got to get the courts involved, we've got to get down to the actual legitimate votes so that we can have a fair count and if it can't be done, then there may have to be a do-over in some places like Pennsylvania. Well, this all seems sort of a hinky to me. The national media keeps saying there's no evidence at all, no evidence at all, but I think normally there's some evidence out there. There's all <laughs> sorts of news reports or whatever. Um, do they not want to see it at all? And now Bill Barr is getting involved, right? Yeah, Barr is involved, but he's wanting to make clear, look, uh, just the fact that we're getting involved doesn't mean there's actual uh, illegality, but uh, actually there's plenty of illegality. There's plenty that's been documented, but if I go back to my judge or chief justice hat, uh, you can't just have the, the massive fraud here, there, that has to be an indication that it would have changed the vote before you would do a complete do-over. And so that's what's got to be done. But frankly, I went to the president over a year ago and said, look, this was the way votes were stolen. This was the way an election was stolen in some races in Dallas, Texas. This is what needs to be done. But he had people like uh, Christopher Krebs that's in charge of the cybersecurity for this election who assured us election day and thereafter uh, there's nothing to see here and what would you expect from the uh, loyalist to Bill Gates he was brought into the government from working for Bill Gates but there is all kinds of problems and uh, uh, cyber security is back basically an oxymoron. There was no cyber security, inadequate anyway. If I were running the Biden campaign, I'd try to get him in place very soon so it's, it's harder to get undone. That's right. Back during 2000, <laughs> Al Gore got a chance to basically go against everything for more than 30 days. At the time, no one had a problem with that, but right now, it's got to go. Got to hurry, hurry, hurry. Are you finding that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Al Gore took 37 days uh, in order for him 
him to be satisfied through the courts that uh, there was nothing, uh, he didn't win. And we found from a subsequent uh, count, he really didn't win. But in this case, it's uh, a little bit analogous to the, uh, the review in football games. If you can hurry up and get the next play started before they have a chance to see how bad that play was, then there's no penalty despite the wrong conduct. There's 72 million people right now that feel disenfranchised with this election, but, but most are being told, let's all get together, let's forget about this and get on with it. But um, what do you feel about that? I feel what I know is that if this election is allowed to continue to be stolen the way it certainly appears it was, then there will not be another Republican elected president and eventually they'll be able to use the same tactics to ensure that every state is a one party state. And we just, we're, we're talking about a major move to socialism here. And uh, we've been promised that's what was coming, the end of fossil fuel, which will take us back several decades from where we were. The big winner will be China, the second biggest winner, Iran, third biggest winner will be Russia. They all will be able to just blow our doors off once Trump is out of office. Mr. Gilbert, thank you. We'll be right back. Thank you, Neil.